About a decade ago, the image of bonky table computers was often associated with each person's workplace. All data is stored on our computer's hard drive or CD. With the advent of cloud computing and the explosion of mobile devices, everything is stored on the cloud and exploited through mobile applications. Each individual is a unit that produces data with a series of images, audio, etc. They are posted on information channels or exist on the internet daily, each hour, even each second. The digitalization of and storage on cloud makes the world produce enormous amounts of data, far beyond the capacity of traditional databases. Since then, the trend of big data technology was born to solve the problem of storage and processing of data. The big data is referred to as a true revolution in the role of a customer. A person searching for products on Amazon, for example, is interested in a laptop. He will certainly be familiar with a site suggestion related to products such as bags for laptops, screen sticker, or keyboard pad, etc. It's just one of the many great turning points that big data brings to our time. How big data technology is being applied in Vietnam? What is the issue of equipping human resources to meet the current needs? Listen to the sharing of Mr. Pavitra, Indian big data specialist, Southeast Asia training director of the NIIT International Training Institute. Greetings from Shanghai, Vietnam, on VTC10 Netviet. In today's program, we are going to talk about big data, a new type of science in Vietnam. And the guest speaker in our program today is Mr. Pavitra, the managing director of NIIT in Southeast Asia. So, thank you for joining us. The first question we have for you is: What can you say about the development of big data around the world? When we say big data. And my country is India. I come from India. Uh, you must have heard few months back, we demonetized our currency. Must have heard that we we used complete online system to make payments. So that was only possible because we went for digitalization or digital transformation. That is, our life is totally online. That is, making small payments, buying stuff. So when it comes to this kind of economy, where which is driven by digital. We need databases, robust system to take care of it. That is where this technology, big data, comes in. So this big data is not a technology which is only for enterprises, but it touches every human being in my country. Today, a farmer can decide how the soil uh, or how much pesticides is going to use. He knows what is the rate in the market and what rate he sells his product. I can go to a shop and drink tea and pay online using my phone. And we have uh, the high school results are coming out. We give results using digital locker. In your opinion, what is the role of big data in the current context of Vietnam? I would say Asia, India, Vietnam are fast transforming into the digital world. It is not an option that we don't. We will have digital automation coming in. We will have people more integrated with each other. Even now, we see a lot of activities which are happening online. When we talk about Industry 4.0, where automation of manufacturing or all other things happen, big data is the core technology on which this happens. So Vietnam has to go into this very soon. What are the advantages and the disadvantages for Vietnam in order to develop the big data? In your opinion, the whole world is moving towards digital transformation to make the society and manufacturing more good, to get more people better jobs. Make ourselves competitive across the world. We have to go digital. V means Vietnam, and big data, IoT, artificial intelligence, cyber security. These are the few things which will be very important to develop the systems, which will affect every person from a farmer to the industry. With more than 13 million internet users and more than 15 million internet mobile phone users, Vietnam is an attractive destination for many large data solution providers such as Microsoft, IBM, 
Oracle. Big data and analytical technology has the potential to completely change the face of economics. So new business models based on large data technology are being formed to help organizations and businesses leverage existing data to make a profit. In recent years, a number of internet businesses such as FPT, VNG and VC Corp have been involved in large-scale data research and application in customer behavior analysis. In the banking sector is Vietcom Bank and in the transport sector can be referred to Vietnam Airlines. This is considered an indispensable trend for enterprises in Vietnam. Hiện nay như bên mình công nghệ data đang sử dụng để phục vụ cho việc khai thác và phân tích dữ liệu. Ví dụ hiện nay bên mình có những dự án mà lượng dữ liệu nó rất là lớn và tốc độ xử lý yêu cầu phải có cái thời gian xử lý rất là nhanh để phản hồi lại cho phía người dùng cũng như để trả về kết quả. Thì do lượng dữ liệu quá lớn lên các phương pháp phân tích cũ của mình ấy, thường là không đáp ứng yêu cầu vì thời gian trả phản hồi của nó khá là lâu. Cho nên công ty cũng đã hướng đến việc là nghiên cứu và áp dụng thử các cái công nghệ liên quan đến big data. Thì bên mình cũng đã có tham khảo tư vấn một số các cái chuyên gia rồi các tiến sĩ học đi học ở nước ngoài về. For businesses, large data usually includes business results reports, data on the status of export and import of goods, the level of interest of customers to each product segment, etc. When analyzing the data, businesses will be able to evaluate their situation, forecast future fluctuations, and provide solutions to improve their business performance as soon as possible. However, the understanding and application of big data of enterprises in Vietnam is limited. Most of the enterprises that own big data in Vietnam do not have projects that take advantage of big data. Therefore, Vietnam needs to equip enterprises with necessary information, speed up the process of restructuring the system, set up information infrastructure, collect data and process data to fully take advantages of big data. Trước mắt thì doanh nghiệp thấy cái thuận lợi thứ nhất là cái cộng đồng về cái nguồn mở về big data là rất là lớn. Thì doanh nghiệp có thể trao đổi với tìm hiểu thông tin. Đấy thì cái thuận lợi rất là thuận lợi. Cái thứ hai nữa là cái khó khăn thực tế là hầu như là các doanh nghiệp khác họ cũng chưa định hình được cái khái niệm big data là gì. Thực tế là cũng rất là mơ hồ. Đấy, đấy thì cái đấy là khó khăn lớn nhất. À, thực chất là doanh nghiệp thì một mình mình không thể đứng lên. Thì rất mong là ví dụ trong nước có những cái hội đoàn thể hay là bản thân chính phủ có những cái truyền thông về big data hay là có những cái dự án cụ thể yêu cầu về sử dụng big data chẳng hạn thì doanh nghiệp sẽ đứng cái vai trò là triển khai vai trò thực hiện thì nó sẽ hiệu quả cho doanh nghiệp hơn là doanh nghiệp là tự bản thân từng doanh nghiệp đi tự tìm hiểu sẽ rất là tốn chi phí. In general, big data is playing an increasingly important role not only for businesses but also for the national economy thanks to the rapid and accurate collection and analysis of information, enabling managers to make decisions, which lead to timely planning, reducing risks, and optimizing the quality of products and services. However, this is still a new field that businesses and organizations need to study in order to apply effectively. So what is the role of big data among the Vietnamese enterprises nowadays and especially in the future? Uh, mostly the enterprises which are there use some or the other databases. When I say enterprises, it can be telecom or finance which are big out here. They are looking into growing bigger. So they would be looking into going for this kind of application. Currently the organization which I know, like some of the banks, they have to hire people from India, Ukraine or Japan to come here work as consultants to implement this big data project which they are working into which becomes Im not feasible in terms of cost because it's a new technology a new way of doing business the whole engineering has to be done from the scratch we have the telecom sector here like Vital, MTN which are growing up very fast we have a big uh, financial market banks which are moving up fast now they are reaching a lot of customers today the market is getting competitive the margins are coming down and down. So the companies which I say banks or financial segment or telecom 
have to be effective in their services, in their customer acquisition, smart marketing plans. What is the role of education and training in the development of big data in Vietnam? First thing that has to be created is creating the human resource pool. Without that, we cannot really progress ahead. While most of the organization understand the need of big data, the bigger organization as well as the government understands the need of the big data. For example, Ho Chi Minh City is planning to become a smart city. But the biggest challenge that we face today is manpower. The so first pro uh, point is get the manpower and the human resource ready for it. Once that is done, things will come in shape very quickly. Typically what the statistics of IDC says, it says about 50 million people are required every year. So I break it up with the rising uh, manpower and the requirement in Asia, I would guess around 40 to 50,000 manpower required in Vietnam per year, which is quite a big number out here. While we have a lot of universities and colleges in India, I would say even in, in uh, Vietnam we face the same problem, that our curriculums are not aligned to what the technology is asking for. So that is where we need to look into how do we upgrade our education system, introduce technology into them right at their schooling and high school and university part so that it becomes easier for them to pick up technology. Big data is not like another programming language, it's, but we have to create that culture along, among our education systems to get it done. So what should be the direction in the training and also the curriculum of the schools when providing the lessons on big data for the Vietnamese students? Now big data is not one technology that can be there. A candidate can have its own ambition to become a big data analyst, a data scientist or he can become a data visualization expert or he can become, go into sales and marketing to get effective analytics done. But the basics still remains the same. So it varies for a person to learn, it, he has to undergo stages by which he learns. For a fresher, for a high school person to learn, it may take around three years time, typically to go through those stages within his university curriculum, so that when he comes out, he knows what is data analyst. Let me give you one example in this. Like when we talk about data analyst, we need to create that aptitude in the person to understand data and take decisions. Few things which have to be cultured in a person rather than teaching him. That is why it is very important that we start at a very young age within the universities. While for the advanced people for, who are already into this field, who are working in IT, it would typically require some 60 hours to 200 hours to learn and start implementing it. People who are more experienced and advanced. But in a long term perspective, we need to integrate newer technologies within our university curriculums. In what ways do you think the government should pay attention to the development of big data in Vietnam? Uh, Vietnam government is already paying a lot of attention into big data. We were in discussion with uh, Ho Chi Minh Computer Association for quite some time, who have the vision of making smart city as a test mode. And to get a smart city done, the first thing they have to get is people getting trained in technologies like big data, IoT, artificial intelligence and cyber security. So they are very much aware about this, getting devices for IoT and uh, connecting them with the databases. So things are in place. I'm very sure within a few years we will see the changes coming in into this. They are in the process in discussion of getting manpower trained in this field. Thank you Mr. Pavitra for joining us and we hope your experience will help Vietnam boost the development of big data. You're welcome. And that's all we have for this episode of Shang Vietnam today. For comment and feedback, don't hesitate to write to us at shangvietnam at netviettv.net. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.